Thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate everyone. And thank you so much for liking and subscribing. It really helps me a lot. And don't forget to check out my website, paradoxastrology.com. I am a professional astrologer and I can help you with anything. Okay, let's get into this video. Have you guys ever wondered what kinds of dreams there are? and what they mean and are there different types have you ever wondered that always wonder that because i have very vivid dreams so i'm gonna tell you and they all mean something different so this is according to the book this is the tibetan yoga's dream and sleep this is such a good book tenzin Wangal. he's profound he's really profound and he talks all about dreams and this is just such an interesting book he talks about i've said this before too and i didn't realize this was a real thing this is just what i came up with but it's in the book and it says that he talks about many monks and people having spiritual experiences that the meditation your dreams and reality and sleep are all connected once you heal one it will heal the other. When something happens in real life, it'll show up in your dreams. If it shows up in your meditation, it'll show up in real life. It's all connected. So to heal yourself, you can heal yourself through your dreams, or you can change your reality through your dreams, just like you can through your meditation, all the same thing, different processes. So he talks about the different kinds of dreams and your level of consciousness will determine what kind of dreams you're having. So the more you meditate or you practice yoga and you do different things like that, you're going to raise your level of consciousness, mantras, things like that. And you're going to be able to lucid dream and control your dreams. And this is so important because once you start controlling your dreams, dreams, you're going to realize that you can control your reality, that in reality, physical reality, you're actually just asleep and you just got to wake up. And he says, for example, that if you're in your dream, all of a sudden there's a wave coming at you, right? You're not going to be afraid and say, oh, I'm going to die. Oh no. Right. And be in fear and then wake up and then be in fear the rest of the day. Like that something's going to happen. No, what you're going to be able to do now is realize you are the wave. And it's not going to put you in fear. You're like, oh, I am it. I <laughs> go with the flow. And so when you realize that you can control your dreams, because most people, it's, kind of, it's just going haywire. It's just a result of the first level of dreaming. The first level of dreaming has to do with just reenacting certain things from physical reality when you dream a lot. It's going to bring up all your emotions, all your karmas, all your everything like that. It's your mind processing the day when you're on this first level, which is called somatic dreams, the ordinary somatic dreams dreams or there's a second level which is called the dreams of clarity and there's a third level called clear light dreams somatic dreams like ordinary dreaming which arises for personal karmic traits that could either be non-lucid or lucid when you dream of clarity which i'm going to explain in a second that could be lucid non-lucid or the other one which is clear light dream that is just lucid dreams so that's kind of what people try to obtain to. That's why yogis always practice. There's there's different practices that you can do in order for you to control your dreams and do lucid dreaming. The first one has to do with the dreams of karmic traces. It's meaning finding in these dreams that meaning that we project into them. And it's imputed by the dreamer rather than inherent from the dream. So this also is a case in the meaning of our walking life. It doesn't make meaningful dreams unimportant any more than it makes meaning in our walking life unimportant. But the process is similar to reading a book. A book just marks the paper just because we bring our senses to the meaning of it is the meaning that we take from it. And the meaning of the book, like a dream, is a subject to interpretation. Two people can read the same book, have entirely different experiences. One person may ch change their whole life based on the meaning that was found in the pages, while the other one will mildly interested or not at all. The book has not changed. The meaning has been projected into words by the reader, then read back. So that's what your dreams are. Only you really, or a master of dreams, will understand what that really means to you. Then there's the other one, which is dreams of clarity. Myself, I've experienced this dreams of clarity a lot of times. And that's why I really love this book because it really explains, I'm sure there's others out there like me who are wondering like, what does this mean? Well, the second level is where it's a process in the dream where dreams become clear and more detailed and a larger part of the dream is remembered. This is a result of bringing greater awareness into the dream state. 
which can be done with meditation and yoga as well. Beyond this increased awareness in ordinary dreams is a second kind of dream called the dream of clarity, which arises when the mind and the prana are balanced and the dreamer has developed the capacity to remain in non-personal presence. Unlike the somastic dream in which the mind is swept here and there by karmic prana, in the dream of clarity, the dreamer is stable through the images and information arise. They are based on less personal karmic traces and instead present knowledge available Available directly from consciousness below the level of conventional self. This is where you can receive knowledge from higher self within your dream and it'll give it to you. I'll give you an example. Now, when I'm studying astrology, well, I'm always studying astrology, but as I'm studying astrology, I do the mantras to the planets, okay? And I meditate on the mantras of the planets and the nakshatra and in my dreams whatever one I did that night, it will explain to me over and over in the dream what that planet means what that nakshatra means and give me insights that I didn't have before the dream. It will do that. It will also, there's a thing called where it continues your dream. So it will seem you're just dreaming randomly until you start realizing that you keep going back into the same dream and you'll keep doing that until you've learned the lesson of that. So it's not a random dream. So for example, I have these dreams where I have a job, like I have this whole other life in the dream reality. And and it is a mix, a little bit of the mix of the reality I've lived. And except for I didn't really have too many jobs, like oh, I had like one in high school and stuff like that, and like a couple when I was young, but it plays out this dream. So I'll have this job, I'll be working, I'll have a paycheck at this job, and all of a sudden, then the next time I'll go back into the dream, I'll remember, okay, yeah, I don't get paid till Friday. So I'll keep going back in the dream until it's Friday. And in that dream, then I'll go get my pay, and then some other things will happen. So it continues on, and then sometimes I'll see person oh yeah I remember you from two dreams ago how are you I'll remember it's a continuous dream until you learn the karma it sounds so weird but I'm sure some of you have had it within these dreams you can be initiated into certain occult practices where you're able to be a teacher of these occult practices now he gives an example of there was a guy who wanted to learn certain occult practices so he went to sleep and then when he was in his sleep there was a woman dressed in all beautiful garments and a whole bunch of people came up to him and they I said okay you're gonna do our ceremony he's like what are you talking about he's like oh our occult ceremony he's like i don't know how to do that they're like don't worry you do and he was like what and then they brought them over and then somehow he did the ritual he knew the ritual and they said oh thank you yes you've been doing this ritual for many lives now that you've done the ritual you can go back and now you can teach this and they give you the information through the dream. It wakes up your subconscious because it's really you. It's waking you up to what you really are. You'll gain this information. So then when he came out of the dream, not only do they do that, but if you become a teacher and initiated in the dream or meditation, they will bring you all the students to you worldwide. You'll never have to promote yourself. And I know people who do this. I've seen people who do this, who've been initiated. And that's why they don't have to market. They're not online. There's astrologers not online, occultists not online because they've had done this initiation. And I do hope to do this initiation one time. I'll tell you that this has happened to me. People have visited me in my dreams, things like that, premonitions, things like that. So that would kind of be more of the second level of premonitions. I've also been initiated by beings in meditation. I'll talk about that in another dream but i'm just saying that that can in another video but that can happen as well where you can be initiated within meditation if you go deep enough certain entities that you've known in past lives will come to work with you again and then the third one is clear light dreams now this is the third dream that occurs when one is far along the path. I've never had this happen to me before. Maybe someone out there has. And it's the clear light dream. It arises from the primordial prana in the central channel. And the clear light is generally spoken in the teachings about sleep yoga it indicates a state free from a dream thought and image. And there is a clear light dream in which the dreamer remains in the state of mind. This is not easy for accomplishment. The practitioner must be very stable and non-dual awareness before the clear light dream arises. So it's kind of like being all light, but able to control it because it's lucid. That's like a whole other step of beyond. And then once you're able to do that, you're a master in reality. You will become a master of manifestation in the physical reality. Now that takes a lot of practice, dedication, a lot of internal work 
to do because I'll tell you, I meditate a lot and things like that, an hour a day at least, and then do mantras and things like that. But I still have my dreams. My dreams will still bring up past things, past karmas and things like that. So I'm not even fully at the second level. I still have first level dreams as well. And so that will show you how awakened you really are, is your dreams, is how are your dreams? Are you lucid? Are you in control of your dreams? This meditative state I have do in meditation all the time. It's non-duality, not remembering where I am. I'm not afraid. I'm connected to myself. I'm like, what life am I living? You get to the point of non-duality and it's lucid. I can decide to do whatever I want, but it's hard to know what you want to do because you don't remember anything. Been in that state of non-duality, but I've never done that, but in my dreams. So that just shows it's like, you may think you're awake because of your meditation, but your dreams, your subconscious will tell you how awake you really are. So I thought that was just super interesting about dreams. And maybe you found that interesting too. And uh, if you want me to talk more about that, I definitely will. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate all of you and I'll see you next time.